Welcome to The Whole Steward, the holistic approach to wealth from a Christian worldview. I'm your host, Andrew Stanton, and I'm glad you've joined. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. I have some challenging news today and a favor to ask of you as we sit again at the feet of the wisest and richest man that ever lived to glean the wisdom laid before us today on The Whole Stew. Hi, this is Gary Pinkerton with Gary's Gulch Podcast. You are listening to The Whole Steward with Andrew Stanton, one of the best researched shows by a man of true passion. Now that you know more, go out and grow more. This is episode number 60. I'm thankful that you've joined. This is the holistic approach to wealth, and we do not only talk about finances here. We talk a lot about them, but we recognize here that our capital goes far beyond just financial capital. When you talk about wealth, what does that mean to you? Well, we have the nine forms of capital. We have spiritual capital, physical capital, intellectual capital, experiential capital. We have relational capital, cultural capital, material capital, financial, and of course, time. We manage all these forms at any given time, and sometimes it's important to emphasize one over another. Today, we are contrasting two forms of capital. One is the wealth, uh, basically financial capital. Um, The other is our spiritual capital capital. This is something we talk a lot about on The Whole Steward, but it's always good to get a reminder and we can sit at the feet of the richest and also wisest man that ever lived. Now, did he live out his wisdom uh, in practice? Not always. You might have guessed who I'm talking about. That is Solomon. And the verse that I quoted during the intro is Ecclesiastes 7 Two. Now, a little bit later, I want to take us a little bit through Ecclesiastes 7, and there's a lot to learn there. However, I have some difficult news to bring you today and a favor to ask, as I said. So you may remember uh, my dear brother, Andy Waits, who came on the show in episode number 47 This is Andy Waits, and he helped me set up the Whole Steward podcast. He is suffering right now under a great trial. He has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I just, I'm sure he would be okay with me sharing this with you because he appreciates the prayers and the love and the support. Now, his message for us is a very important one. And what I want to do is I want to play that message for you. The The doctors basically, I'll, I'll let him explain that to you, but the doctors are basically, um, this is all unfolded just in the last couple of weeks, that they're basically going to try to make him comfortable. And, and that's pretty much, as far as we know at this time, all they can do in terms of treatment although they may do some things, but this is difficult news. And we take an abundance approach here. And we know that there is abundance here in this life. And certainly we're going to get into that in Ecclesiastes 7. But there's also the raw facts of life. And this is difficult news. So please Listen in with me as Andy shares an update, and I think it is a very, very appropriate and important message for us today. So, listen in. There we go. Hi there. It's Andy and Darcy. It's been a few days since we did a a full-fledged post, a video or anything to... (coughs) Let you know what's going on. 
And what's going on is we finally got some uh, clarification, tons of tests. Obviously, I'm back in the hospital again. Um, but the, the, the truth is this. Um, they're telling me they're going to keep me comfortable. So we don't have a timeline. Don't know what any of that means. But keeping you comfortable means, well, you know what that means. I don't have to explain that to you. But and I want to thank everybody for being so sweet and reaching out. And I haven't been able to reach back, of course, because I just don't have a lot of energy. But uh, a lot of people have been sending, you know, the uh, soft, loving, cuddly lamb Jesus stuff, and which I love. You know, of course, that's he is that. But it's not like that. Something is happening to me that's strange. Nothing is happening to me that isn't going to happen to you. You need to be prepared for this too, because at some point whether it's 30 years from now or 30 minutes from now, we're going to enter that through that veil of judgment and be with God. It's just how that works. And so a lot of people have been sending me things about being healed and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's highly unlikely. Um, but it's, of course, God created the world. He can do anything he wants with it. But here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4. Uh, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. It is for our momentary light affliction. Oh, for our momentary light affliction is working out for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, what are the things which are not seen? What are the things which are seen are temporal. What are the things which are not seen are eternal. So, you know, I, I'm going to be singing in the church or the, the 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 heavenly choir before long. I mean, this is a a, a pretty exciting thing, something we look forward to all our lives. Uh, we talk about being prepared and everything. I truly am prepared. Now, my concern is my lovely wife, Darcy, because, you know, she's far too young and pretty to be a widow. Oh, stop. And oh, yes, I look beautiful right now. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you you do to me. You do to me. You are the peak experience, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, well... So anyway, thank you for all the decades you've been along on the ride with me. And and uh, hopefully, uh, I know I've been uh, in need of a lot of uh, forgiveness and repentance along the way. God has granted me that repentance. More importantly, he has granted me his son's righteousness. That's an exchange that we make. Sure, Jesus died on the cross and was raised after three days. But what's that about? That's about him taking our sin on him and then giving us his righteousness so that when God sees us, when God sees me soon in heaven, it's not me that he sees, but he sees me through the lens of Jesus and his righteousness. And that's a good thing because if I'm depending on what I've done, if I'm depending on any of my goodness, it's not going to be enough. Okay, I'm running out of energy, running out of steam. What do you want to say, Darcy? I think you pretty much said it all. You've that, done wonderful. Did I cover it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm stinky and kind of sweaty. And, mm. and so here's the deal. Stage 4 cancer in my lungs. Stage 4 cancer in my abdomen. I've got little lesions all over my head. And this is not going to last long. So, but, you know, say la vie. God is in control. Jesus is my Lord. And hallelujah, he's going to be uh, 
taking me in, making me a, a joint heir soon. Uh, I'm excited about that. You know, I'm not crazy about this whole process, but um, but it's going to be something wonderful. All right. So know that I love you. Know that I'm seeing your messages, even if I don't respond to them. I'm just not able to do a lot of that. And uh, we'll keep you informed as we're able to keep you informed. All right. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Ecclesiastes 7.2. It's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. That's not to say that we don't appreciate the times of prosperity. We'll get into that in a minute, but <clears throat> I thought it was important that you hear that message because Andy's testimony there is a very powerful one. You take what you have in this life that's temporal and certainly we talk about that a lot and the need to do well in it to grow your wealth to be a good steward to be a good citizen to be a good husband and father and um, you know, business owner and all these things to the praise and glory of God while we're here on this earth but to know that these things are passing away, that man is as a breath. And my dear friend Andy, um, six months ago, three months ago, two months ago, we would have no idea. You have no idea when, what, what the number of your days will be. And therefore, as Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain even the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Andy has given us a reminder of his disposition before God and that it's an exchange of Christ's righteousness for our own filthy rags. And he has an eternal hope in heaven, riches and glory and pleasure in communion with God forevermore. And that is because he has trusted his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I said we would go through Ecclesiastes 7. This is, again, Solomon giving us a perspective, this balanced perspective. Starting in verse 1, a good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better for a man to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of fools. This also is vanity. Surely oppression drives the wise into madness, and a bribe corrupts the heart. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the heart of fools. Say not, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance and advantage to those who see the sun. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. Consider the work of God, 
Who can make straight what he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful. And in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other. So that man may not find out anything that will be after him. That was verses 1 through 14 of Ecclesiastes 7. A lot of references there from a holistic approach to wealth. You see so many references to the material and earthly things that we have. The importance of wisdom when you're uh, taking hold of an inheritance. Um, But protecting wisdom is like the protection of money. And we've talked about, even in recent episodes, how the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. right? So my favor to ask of you today, then, is to pray for Andy and Darcy. You remember, um, if you you didn't hear the episode with him, that I interviewed him just uh, a few short episodes ago, 13 to be exact, it was number 47, Pray for them. Pray that they would be upheld in the strength of the Lord. Pray for um, healing. That's an okay thing to pray for. As he said, God has certainly done uh, very miraculous things in this regard. He's even raised the dead. But pray most importantly for the spiritual well-being. And then take a moment of introspection. We are very busy. In fact, I was just talking with my wife, Anna, this morning about all the different circles of influence that I'm involved in, and it seems like every single one of them has ramped up the notches of volume of attention required in each of these areas. Um, we have uh, my, my cousin's cousin, who also just died suddenly from a rare form of leukemia cancer after three days. He was healthy three days earlier, and he was gone after that, 22 years old. So we have that this week. We have the news of Andy. Please pray for them. Certainly, it's a good thing to visit these because, as Solomon says, if you... All you hear is the, the, the songs of fools. In other words, the happy stuff, the life is fine and great, and uh, we're, we're all okay here, and perhaps living a very wealthy life on this earth, and yet not giving thought to these things. It's not, um, it's not wisdom. It does not come from wisdom in that case. So let's take a moment to pray for Andy and consider our own life. But to not let this discourage us. Because particularly, if you know the Lord, if you have the same hope that Andy has, you know from a holistic approach that you can enjoy the good gifts that God has given you. You can work hard in your business, as Andy certainly did throughout his life. You can go listen to the Daily Bible, which is on Spotify, which Andy Waits narrated the entire Bible. You can hear God's Word today and take it to heart. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. I'll end with this, the way that Solomon wraps up Ecclesiastes, and certainly there's so much more that we can get into, and we will in future episodes, but he wraps up with this, verse 13 of chapter 12, the end of the matter, all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, for God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. 
Remember, Andy was talking about that. When he passes through the veil, and God judges without partiality. And Christ Jesus lived a perfect life on our behalf. For those who trust in him, his blood covers their sins. And we have life eternal. Remember, that's where the true riches are. You can have riches here in this life, but it's temporary. It's passing. You will give it to somebody else, as Solomon says. And who knows whether they'll do a good job with it or not. What matters in the end is the eternal. And what we do on this earth does impact the eternal. It certainly does. It's not to minimize what we're doing. So do a good job. Pray for Andy. And evaluate today your own standing before the Lord. And where you put your heart and your mind in terms of wealth management. And remember, there's nine forms of capital that we're managing. That's why it's a holistic approach to this wealth. With that being said, I pray that you found this as a blessing, even though a heavy topic. Pray for Andy. And now that you know more, go out. All content on The Whole Steward is for informational purposes only and must not be considered personal, professional, tax, or legal advice. Please consult an appropriate professional for individualized advice. Though we do our best to bring you reliable information, we make no guarantee on its accuracy. So you must rely on your own due diligence to draw your own conclusions. The views expressed by guests on the show are their own and may not represent that of the host. Please visit our website for complete terms and conditions. Thanks for joining us today for the holistic approach to wealth from a Christian worldview. This show is brought to you by thewholesteward.com.